I've been out here four days and uh, it's been rainy every day. And this clam traveler has been great. It's pleasant to sit in, provides a lot of protection. And uh, you may want to consider it if you're uh, looking for a nice six foot wide vertical wall shelter. So people say, well, you know, what do you do for extra space, Cosmo? You know, it's like, are you sleeping there? You know, so I have the 13 foot cross shelter. It's pretty big. See the Traveler's four foot five inches and the sky is about six feet long. So if that's a consideration for your car, those are the lengths. No trouble fitting it in the car. Has a waterproof roof. No CM mosquito netting. A door. There's no zip open windows. The sky has zip open windows. Carpet doesn't come with it. That's one of my, uh, polyethylene carpets, which are great. Okay, a GCI pi um, Pico chair and table in here. So there's no problem fitting two chairs and two tables in here and moving around a little bit, right? It's uh, compact. I put in a, uh, a Lucy light for evening. A word in the Lucy light, you know, they're nice, but they, uh, they, they don't have a removable battery. I don't trust lights that I can't change the batteries in. So this is kind of an add-on. I'll put it out in the sun. Uh, it seems okay. Now, these are my shower hooks. I highly recommend these in camp. Or when you're going to go shower, you want to hang up your stuff. There's never any hooks in those campground bathrooms. You hook this on anything and hang your shower bag, your towel, your clothing. Just bring five or six of them in there with you. You're all set. Look, the shelter has these struts. They're all built in, right? You can see plenty of videos about how this thing sets up. Uh, but these are Velcroed in. You can replace them, okay? Uh, it's the construction is quite good. It sets up in under one minute, which is nice. Now, it also has these uh, flaps on the bottom, which I really didn't deploy. Those are to shed wind, but I know from winter camping and beach camping, if you were, say, down at Assateague Island on a windy beach, you would pile sand up on this, uh, on those flaps, and that would help it prevent sand from getting under there, from wind getting under the bottom and going into the uh, into the tent. So there's some pretty good designs here uh, that you're not going to get on a four-legged four uh, pavilion. You know, uh, this is fairly lightweight. I mean, the structure's built in, but they're really relying on these anchor points when you need them to hold, uh, to hold this thing together and keep it up in wind, heavy wind. Uh, I've seen easy ups that are good in the wind, but boy, they are like 100 pounds. <laughs> uh, there are other solutions. I'm not holding this out as the only solution. It's one that I bumped into and like. And uh, I think the Traveler is a pretty nice, uh, pretty nice shelter for one or two people. So if you want one, get it now, because this stuff is made in China, and after three weeks, they stop making it and they change the model. This one is the Traveler. This is the Clam Traveler probably end up using this more than the sky. The brown shelters all take the same size walls. So I can use the walls from my sky shelter on this traveler shelter. It, it seems pretty obvious to me that all these shelters, the gazelle, there's a couple of no-name ones, are all coming out of China from maybe one source is what it looks like to me. On close examination, they look more similar than different. Minor tweaks here and there. Clam, I just happen to like their product. It's a good idea to make sure all your interior space is usable. I can stand up in here, uh, no problem, right? I two, four, I can put four, I put several people standing in here. You know, it's six feet wide, six by six, that's 36 square feet on the floor, but it's 36 square feet in the ceiling too. Not so with this Coleman monstrosity I bought, which was like an A-frame thing, 10 feet on the floor, and maybe four or five feet in the top, and you gotta stay in catty corner, you feel like you're in a prison because the walls are coming up against your face. It just, it ruined my life. I had to get rid of it. I gave it to somebody I didn't like, you know? So stick with something that has usable space. I find it to be a nice, pleasant experience in here. Uh, not much lacking. You know, some people like the uh, the overhang, the, the awning that comes out of the top, you know, and it's sewed on there. But I just don't find them very functional at all. They're usually too small. If you've sat under here, this is a good size awning. Let's use, let's use this as an example. So this is fairly good size. I don't know, it must be 10 feet across, 8 feet wide. When I sit under there in the sun, 
the sun is moving, I can be sitting out there sometimes to try and catch the shade. You know, the sun really moves at all kinds of angles across the sky. So if you have some little uh, awning sewed onto a tent, it's really not going to be too practical in a lot of cases. Uh, you know, the concept is nice, the psychology is great, right? It convinces you to buy it. But my experience, yours may be different, they may be really valuable and useful to you, but for me, they don't offer much protection against anything. They, if the rain is falling at any angle whatsoever, you're going to get wet under some little sewn on uh, uh, awning. If it's windy, they, you know, with two poles and two ropes or three, even four ropes, they're, they're really going to be stressed out. Not to mention the A-frame bug room you've got is going to be stressed to heck when the wind starts blowing. They just don't hold up. They can't even come close to this thing because this thing has this X structure here, which are fiberglass poles reinforcing it. This shelter, you know, over 20 miles an hour, 22 miles an hour, I clocked it with a wind meter. That roof, that roof right there has to come off of it and I have to just... in the sand, uh, no problem with them at all. I took down the uh, the rendezvous tarp. I just took down the poles, there's some chairs under there. It's just being buffeted in the wind. I'm not using it. When I'm going to use it, I'll put it back up again. At Montauk, these quick set shelters stood. They stood up against the wind. 45 mile an hour winds, 48 miles an hour. I think, yeah, 48 might have been the peaks but they stood because of that X structure. And you know, I'm looking at the roof. The roof has got a tie out on it too. I'm beginning to think that if it's really windy, you lash a rope up there and tie that towards the direction the wind's coming from and it will help stabilize the top part of it. That remains to be proven. That's a, you know, I can't see any other reason why you'd put a loop on top of there. These are lash points. I, I can see no other reason why you would do that. But again, I saw them in action and they, uh, they held up pretty good. That's better than almost all the other shelters I saw. A lot of choices out there. I, I'm just telling you what to look for and keep in mind. The choice is ultimately yours. It's probably pretty important that I show a lot of different fast cut angles. Evidently that is what people want to see. In every sentence to change your angle. Otherwise your message might not matter. Because these angles hold your attention and it doesn't matter what I'm saying as long as I've got your eyeball. The other thing is I better build some intimacy with my audience. It's good to remember an ounce of image is worth a pound of performance.